I light my smudge in preparation for our time today. I ask the prayers of all my ancestors, your ancestors, and the ancestors that we may not even know about. I ask for their prayers and their blessings, their sinatas today to be with us. Hmm. I say prayers to the spirits of the east, spirits of the south, spirits of the north, spirits of the west. Thank you for being here in this time, this place, and this space. May you share sacredness with us. May you open our ears, our eyes, our hearts, that we may receive something sacred, something wise, something funny, something enlightening and engaging to us. For all those beautiful souls that I cannot see, thank you for honoring me with your time and your presence. See you, Nata. What do I mean? What do I say? How do I pray? This is a time for us to spend together to talk about how I feel about prayer. What is what is prayer? What is the summoning of prayer? Prayer, in essence, for me, is that relationship between sacred and self. It's the relationship that is and one of open listening, of open receiving. There are many different types of prayer. There are long prayers that have been passed down from generation to generation. There are prayers that are associated with different rituals, the calling of, very, of different spirits or various spirits. There are many types of prayer. But the prayer for me that I want to just kind of explore today is the the absolute prayer that comes from soul and self. And I know I'm going to go off topic. And you, constant listener, dear listener, you know I'm going to go off topic too. So, you know, bear with me. And here we are in prayer. What is prayer? For me, it really is that place of just going inside and feeling words or prayer of silence. I like the prayer of silence and the ability to sit with my own self, with my own psyche, with my own relationship to spirit and be open to the oneness, be open to the stillness. Prayer for me is also very impromptu. I have very few pre-rehearsed words that I use in prayer. I use some pre-rehearsed or learnt phrases for me because there are comfortable ways and there are set ways for me to close space or close time. And that's important for me. If I opened up space in a particular way, it's important that I also close space in a particular way. So as I use similar steps each time I open up prayer or each time I open up sacred space, those are invitations to spirit to join with me. So if I'm closing space, then those invitations that I've created are then, you know, they're honored for attending, they're honored for coming into the presence, they're honored for being here with us today. So there are closing steps. Are those prayers? Those are prayers, but they're also interlocutory agreements. They're agreements that are between myself and the spirits. So as I call them in and as we release them. It's a partnership and relationship. I think prayers are partnership and relationship. If I was to say prayers today on April 25th, it's you know, another day in the epidemic and the pandemic of coronavirus. And what would be my prayer today? My prayer would be spirits of the north, the south, the east, the west for all who can hear me and my voice carry to all who cannot. 
I pray for compassion, I pray for understanding, and I pray for the release of illness upon this soil, upon this earth. Prayer to the spirits of the water to wash us clean and bring us clarity and introspection. Prayers to the spirits of fire that our illumination, our imagination, and our even our own immune systems are enlightened. Prayers to the spirit of air. May you blow through this time and this space, not only my body, but the space in the world around us, that you may blow this illness away or dissipate this illness away. So that would be an idea of what the prayer would be like as an impromptu. I think that relationship with spirit for me is one of impromptu. And as I just indicated, I certainly have aspects of prayer that are rigid because they have very set purposes for me. I have been involved in, you know, Christian mythology and the Christian way when I was a young woman. And so I learned many of the prayers and read many of, of the types of, of honoring spirit that are written down. And I've written, I've read other books, I've read other means of prayer. But what I really wanted to talk about is the relationship that you build with prayer. When we work with the medicine wheel, when we work with the four directions, the six directions, the seven directions, the elements, whatever those elements are for you, Every time that we move into an understanding of the elements we're working with, the spirits we're working with, then we have a better understanding of how they are in our life, how they show up, what their relationship to us is. So for me, in all of the years of praying to East, I pray to the aspects of East that resonate with me. I pray to the golden because for me, there are many aspects of the Eastern philosophy that I find very rewarding and I have a deep resonance with. It's not something I wish to pursue, but I greatly honor the Buddha and the Bodhisattvas, the golden, all of the aspects of ancient, ancient wisdom that is passed down orally and as well as one of the oldest written languages. That is part of my relationship to East. It is also a relationship of air. It is a relationship of all of the things that are associated with East for me. So there is that light of, oh my goodness, I'm illuminated. There is the words that is the intellect there. So the deeper my relationship to any element is, the more challenge not more challenged the you know the the more the more things that I can pull into my prayer if I'm seeking something very specific I do have a prayer that I use when I'm in healing and it is a very specific prayer that I say and it's not only for me but it's for the person that I'm working with and I call in the spirit of air to go through the physical body and you know shake up what doesn't need I call to the spirit of fire to go in and to burn away you know whatever I'm asking the spirit of fire and there are very specific things and the spirit of water to go in and clear away the debris and to give water to open soil. And then I pray to the spirit of the north and the skeletal structure, the bones, the wisdom, the the, the relationship between the mystery and self. So I, I pray to all of those aspects when I'm dealing in the physical body and I'm working with spiritual prayer and spiritual healing. The deep reflection of prayer is when those quiet moments when I am shot with inspiration and I see those as, you know, those relationships to the divine, those relationships to inspiration, the relationship to the reliance and the connection that I have to the spirits that inform me, that entice me, that embrace me, that inspire me. So those two are a form of prayer. Setting up ritual space is a deep and sacred form of prayer. 
For me, when I build any type of sacred space, I always start with a candle in the center before I start even laying out anything else. And I pray for that light. So the center candle has a relationship for me. And the relationship for me is always to have a light on when you eat, when I do journey work, a candle going so that my soul knows where to come home. So that is the relationship that I have to the first candle that I light, to the very first thing that I will light every other candle off of is that intention of, intention to come home, that intention for soul to be safe. When I light the matches for the, I like the ch sound. And for me, that is the relationship of all of the elements. It's a relationship of fire. It's a relationship of wood. It's a relationship of air is, you know, the, the, you know, there's that relationship between all of those elements to create that ch sound and that, ex, you know, that explosion of light. You don't get that with a lighter. And uh, that's not my reason for not using a lighter anyway, but that's irrelevant. When I work with setting up space, there is a prayer and I ask everything that has come in. You, many times you've walked out of your house, I know you have, and you've said, oh, you want to come along with me today. So you'll pick up a stone or you'll pick up a small item or perhaps you're, you're changing the space that you work in. If you work from home or if you work away from home, you bring something different into your space to enliven it, to give you brightness. That is a form of prayer. That's a form of prayer between the inanimate world and the animate world, between that which inspires your soul and that which inspires your mind or whatever it is you're trying to inspire. That's a prayer between that world of inspiration, that world of whatever you're looking for, and, and your own conscious self. So you're building relationship. You're building that bridge. When we choose sacred objects for sacred space, I wait for them to call me. But I also have to tell you, constant listener, that I have certainly made my altars less large than they used to be because I schlep everything myself. And when you have three Rubbermaid, uh, big three Rubbermaid tubs that house everything for your altar, you remember at the end of this spiritual experience, and you may or may not be tired, you still have to pack everything up in prayer for me when I pack everything up I always get people who ask me at the end of a ceremony there is a point to this prayer trust me there is a point I'm going off on a tangent but bear with me constant listener I'm going to get back you know I will so I often get asked if I'm undoing a, an altar if someone can help me and the answer is always no and it's not because I'm fiercely independent and I don't want anyone to help me but because the taking down of sacred space is just as valuable and deep and impressionist for me as the building of the sacred. So as I pick up each item and I may wrap it in something to ensure it's not broken or put it in relationship to something else so that nothing breaks. That's all an aspect of respect, and it's a prayer of gratitude. Everything that has come into sacred space, with gratitude I pick it up, and with gratitude I bundle it, and with gratitude I put it in a container, and then I take it out to my car, and even when I bring it back into my space, into my house, into my healing room, it is unpacked with the same reverence, and it is put in its particular place with the same reverence and the same love as if I, you know, in all aspects. So the gathering of it, the creating of it, the breaking down of it, and the, and the putting away or putting in its sacred spaces, that is all part of relationship and prayer. The deeper my relationship is with each of the elements of ceremony or healing or just simply doing work for myself, 
That's an aspect of creating that sacred space. When we create that sacred space, we bring the spirits with us. But we can't bring the spirits with us if we don't have a relationship to them. One of the ways of creating that relationship is through prayer. How, what is that prayer? That prayer is language. That language is a language that is unique to you and unique to the spirits that you speak to. Or if you are offering prayers that have been written for thousands of years or hundreds of years or a few decades or 10 years that you've been doing this work, whatever it is, those prayers, be conscious when you say the prayers. Be conscious of how they feel in your body. Pay attention if you're saying constant prayer. Pay attention to where you check out in that prayer and where you come back in in that prayer. Are you going to check out in a different place on a different day? What is your relationship to spirit? How does that relationship to spirit, how is that affected? And how does that come into come into process and come into relationship. Those are the things that, you know, I, I ask you to kind of reflect on in this place. So the prayer in itself is as individual as each of us is and is as individual as where we are that day. So if you are saying a constant prayer and you are paying attention to where you come in or where you come out of, of your sacred space, don't chastise yourself, but pay attention and reflect on where you are in your relationship to spirit. If I'm doing journey work, which is a form of prayer for me, it's a prayer of exploration and a whole lot of other things, but there is absolute gratitude for spirits. And when I come out of a journey and I write out the journey in my journal, where else am I going to write it? Well, I can write it on my computer because quite a few of them are written there. But anyway, that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is this. The point of the story is even coming out of the journey, even writing things down, there are points where I sit and I reflect and I am in awe. I am in awe of how spirit has spoke to me. I am in awe how spirit has spoke to someone else. And I take that awe with me when I sit in silence, when I sit in prayer, when I sit in asana, and I reflect on how I am moved and how I move with spirit. What is my relationship? What is the psychological language? What is the spiritual language that I'm speaking? These are all part and parcel to where I come from and how I got there. So I'm moving and I'm coming to and I'm coming back in prayer too. Prayer sends me out at the same time that it brings me in. So if I am concentrating on a particular just nothing, sometimes just nothing, and I just want to be inspired, I just want to be held by spirit, for me just that going in, especially at this time when there's so much uncertainty there is a lot of fear in the world. There are so many things that are going on in this time of coronavirus that sitting just by myself in my spiritual center refreshes me. It rejuvenates me. It rejuvenates me to sit with beings who have sat through more than even I can imagine, who have sat through even more than I can comprehend. It is the integrity of space that also helps to create integrity of prayer. That doesn't mean that I can't have a fully deep, funky, grand, and fucking amazing prayer in my car either. That doesn't mean that I can't be overwhelmed when I come to a place, you know, and when I'm hiking, when I come up to a beautiful high vista, and I think, wow, I am in this sacred space. And even that recognition, is that recognition a place of prayer? So I think that what I'm asking you to do, if you haven't done already, is widen your perception of prayer. Prayer is that end of day, thank you. Prayer is that repetitive asking for blessing. Those are prayers, but those are very conscious prayers. 
I want to ask you to really delve into the unconscious prayers, the unprepared prayer, the impromptu prayer, the self prayer, the relationship to you and whatever it is in prayer. There are other forms of prayer too. I think of yoga as a prayer for my body. I think of each step, each movement of yoga, each time I move my arm, my leg, my body, the whole time that I'm in yoga is a prayer from my body. It's a prayer to move. It's a prayer to have relationship. It's a prayer of gratitude for my body. When I sit and I sit in this place with my rattle and I enjoy my rattle and I sit... The rattle allows me to clear my mind, to have all of my racing thoughts come away and to focus on something. The sound of the drum is the sound for me that allows me to bring myself back into focus. The world can seem really loud. The world can seem very chaotic. How do we go into place of contemplation, into, into place of gratitude, into place with relationship to spirit. How do we go there? Setting an altar space is a way to go there. And I talked about how I like to create an altar space or a sacred space. What do you do to create a sacred space? I know that many of you are artists, and I know that that for you is your prayer. That is your prayer between you and the sacred spirits. That is between a prayer between you and your relationship to flow, between you and the impromptu. The writers, the singers, the songwriters who listen, the teachers, the inspired teachers who listen, who tune into these words and who have tuned in maybe just because of the title of this, you know, this podcast, this video is just because you are asking to explore prayer even deeper. I like the prayer of the Buddha mantras. I think that is another form of prayer. There is prayer to ask spirits to come and to go. We t I talked about that with respect to the very specific words that I say to bring spirit in and some of the very specific words I say to bring spirit out. I know I sound like I'm all over the place, but I want to get to three specific aspects, maybe more, you know, but for me, let's just focus on three. So there's the impromptu, absolute, off the top of your head prayer of sacredness. I truly think that that prayer of sacredness comes from and can become deeper by deepening your relationship to the spirits that are working with you and the spirits that you're calling upon. So there's impromptu prayer. There is a mixture of impromptu prayer and structure prayer. There is a mixture between the words that you say or the actions that you go through every single time you move into sacred space, allowing also for the opportunity to have flow within there. So when I work with the spirit of East, there are certain words that I like to say. I like to say prayers of gratitude to the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas. I like to say prayers of gratitude to the spirit of the deer. I like to say prayers of gratitude to, you know, to the golden eagle. So there is, those are some of the layers of the relationship with that direction. So in that, I have structure, but I also have the ability to move in and out. So there is that also that relationship between structure and how do I put a little bit of flair into it. And then there's this third set that we bring forward and we, and we really can rely on. And those are the prayers and the words that have been spoken for, as I said, thousands of years to thousands of years decades and maybe even 10 years in the prayers that you've been saying. And those structured prayers are by rote. They're, for me, they are 
a pathway that is well worn, that has been utilized well by by many people. It is a well worn path to spirit. It is a well worn path toward blessing. It is a well worn period. And they are the opportunity to create relationship, sacred relationship, because that is specifically what that prayer has been designed to do, is specifically to sing this, bring this particular part of you into balance, or seek blessing for this child that is born, seek blessing for this union that has come about, seek uh, wisdom for the bar mitzvah path that you are coming through, So say there are many types of very structured with very intense reasons why. It is as if we move into the spirit world, there are very strong standing structures. Those very strong standing structures are there because for pre-human, all through the evolution of human, we have had aspects of self, aspects of sacredness, aspects of psyche, all moving and shared within the collective unconscious, all moving and shared in the spirit world. So we have signposts, we have structures that are genuinely created for a specific relationship. So in the spirit world, there is a prayer that would be, there is, there is a relationship to water. So we have very specific goddesses and gods that are associated with water. So when we say those prayers that are been shared to us for millennia through our spirits, then we know we are activating the spirit in the spirit world and asking for that activation of spirit in the in this world, in the physical world, to come into play for us or to come into balance with us. This is, this is a, you know, this is a reality for me. I don't know if it's a reality for you, but it's a reality for me. When we have those absolute, not, they're not absolute as in they stand alone, but there are many, many ways around it. But when we talk about the different types of prayer, it's important to recognize for myself, it's important to recognize there is value in everything. There is value in my impromptu prayer because for me, it takes me deeply into spirit. When the words come off me and I say deep prayers to the spirits as I, as I move through the room or as I move through a circle and I call in each of the directions in the upper world, the lower world, and the world of spirit or the middle world, there, you know, I, I feel that relationship. I feel empowered. And there are times when the spirits themselves overtake me. And in that way, the words that I say, I wouldn't, I don't remember. I know they're inspired. And when I'm saying them, I think, wow, these are absolutely beautiful prayers. And that is the um, impromptuness. That is the ability to be as intuitive as you possibly, you know, just open to the intuition and the relationship, the open-endedness and the flow of relationship with spirit. If I, so we have different ways of recognizing, communicating, and being with spirit. Another form of prayer is yoiking or singing the, you know, the, the speaking in tongues, the prayer, the glossolalia. That's another very deep and um, hollowed, very sacred form of prayer. The movement of song through me, the movement of a spirit through my body, taking my body over to sing their own song or to sing something that needs to be said, something that needs to be understood. That is very sacred for me. That goes in in the category of impromptu. That goes in the category of intuitive for me. The, the, the speaking to spirit through such a beautiful uh, 
I don't know, a beautiful dance, you know, a dance between voice and creativity, a dance between uh, the body. Even dance is a form of prayer. Dance is when we see different forms of prayer. And I, and I think about the, you know, the Sufis and their beautiful dancing prayer and their trance dance. It, it is mesmerizing and beautiful to watch. So as you can see, what I think is that there are many forms of prayer. There are many ways to move with prayer. There are many ways to be in sacred space. Prayer is, is it's just another form of communication, but it is such a deep form of communication. There are many different types of prayers. There are many different ways of praying. Uh, you know, there are many different ways of uh, accessing the sacred and accessing spirit. We know that because we've accessed sacredness and spirit in many different ways. Whether you follow the path of shamanism, neo-shamanism, witchcraft, Wicca, uh, Judaism, whatever, whatever your path is, there's more paths than I could possibly name truly you know with all of the countries in the world and all of the ancestors in the world there are so many different ways the relationship between structures you can feel a structure when I talk about you know something being present in the spirit world and something being you know in the collective unconscious and a structure that you're here that you're in your spirit in your praying about and you have that relationship because it's been building for well pre-human time to human time and you're accessing it so you're accessing all of those years all of the well, all time not measured, that beautifulness of time, that immeasurableness of time, that illusion of time, and to be able to tip into that and to grab onto that and to hold that as sacred. The songs I find sacred. The song that I like to use in the closing of prayer is, or in the closing of any type of circle, is a prayer for the spirits to build the song is actually a bridge. I can see a bridge building as I sing it for the spirits to cross back over. And that's the way that I end my ceremonies and the way that many of the beautiful people that have celebrated spirit with me have helped me close spirit, have helped me close sacred space. Prayer is personal and prayer is communal. Prayer is in community. There are words that we say as a community because they're ingrained in us. The word amen in English is ingrained in us. Uh, for many years, I've used hi hi as a greeting. Um, now, for me, it is important to really bring home my own relationship to my spirits. And so the there's there are just different words that we say. So sinata is blessing, blessings to you. Setupwa is a word that means my prayer to you, my prayer of deepest prayer. There are so many words that can be used with setupwa, and that is a word from spirit. Setupwa, setupwa, setupwa. So when, my, when I'm praying and that word comes out, for me it is a word that bursts through my heart with so many complex and simple emotions at the same time. When I sing in prayers or when I speak in tongues, in the tongue that is my spiritual language, when I use those words and I'm taken over, that is, I think, spirit praying through me. I'm not the one praying. I think spirit just punts me out of the way and uses my body, my voice, my mind in order to share what they wish to say. Yoikin is singing, spirit sings back to you. So whatever comes from you is directly the vocalizations of spirit. So sacredness and prayer come in so many different forms, come in so many different ways of expressing yourself, of building your own intimacy with spirit, building your own relationship to all things beautiful and natural. So I thank you for your time and your space and for giving me your sacred ear. And I appreciate everything about 
you and the space that you shared with me. Keep listening. If you have ideas for further podcasts, please hit me up. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you again for joining us here on the Shaman's Way podcast. If you have any questions, would like to make a request for a future episode, or if you're looking for other shamanic resources, including free drumming tracks, please visit us at shamansway.net. Until the next episode, be well, everyone.